Hello. You're down a bit deep, aren't you? Not much to do down here. The lads were using me for a quick game of footy. Whee! I'm a football fish. Pleased to meet you. We live down so deep in the ocean that for a long time, humans didn't even know we existed. Some fishermen were looking for flounder, but found us instead. Goal! Back of the net! I might not look much like a football to you, but I did back when I was discovered. See, that's what a football used to look like. You might be wondering why I've got this lantern dangling over my head. Well, food is scarce down deep. My lantern helps to attract fish I can eat. Watch this. <coughs> Hey, it's eat or be eaten around here. Other fish want to eat us too, like sperm whales and even other football fish. Oi, get away! <coughs> Phew, that was close. Did you know that the male football fish is much smaller than us females? That's my fella. I'm as big as 15 of him. And when we fall in love, we become very attached. Literally. He hooks on and stays there for life. Well, better get back to me game. See you later. He shoots, he scores. Hi, I'm a shrimp. Yeah, I know. It sounds rude. Shrimp, shrimpy, just tiny and helpless, right? Not a bit of it. Shrimps are one of the most successful species on Earth. And you'll find us in almost every bit of water in the world, from the deepest oceans to the smallest streams and ponds. And there's a shrimp to suit your every need, from a little fella smaller than your fingernail to a tiger prawn as big as your forearm. Thousands of varieties. And check out some of our amazing body parts. Two compound eyes that let me see all around at once. Two pairs of feelers for all your feeling needs. Ten legs. And last but not least, a good old tail to help us steer. The result? An excellent swimmer with a real strong body and tail to... Woo! Get out of trouble when you need to. How's that for amazing? And we've got rhythm too. We do this to communicate and for the heck of it, frankly. And if that doesn't show you how great we are, just think of all the hundreds of animals who depend on us for food. From crabs and whales to you humans. Ha! We must be unbelievably delicious. Yeah, it's hard being so fantastic. Uh, I'll see ya or I'll be dinner. Aloha. Love and peace to you. Welcome to Hawaii. Well, welcome to the sea off the coast of Hawaii. It's super nice to meet you. I know we're going to be good friends. I'm Moonfish. You've never heard of Moonfish? Truly? Well, you need to know about us. We're big fish, big as a manhole cover or a super-sized food plate. We get our beautiful name from our shape. Keep on brightening up the sky, Mr. Moon. <laughs> we Moonfish like our tasty food too. Squid and krill make up our diet and some small fish, mmm. So, little buddies, when I try to eat you later, don't take it personally, okay? You know it's just the circle of life, and I love you. Oh, you're back! Aloha! Now, there's still one thing I need to tell you about Moonfish. It's the most interesting thing. We are the only warm-hearted fish in the whole world. When Moonfish dive to depths, we keep our body warmer than the surrounding water. We do this by flapping our wing-like chest muscles, which generates heat and increases the temperature of our heart. Our warm heart lets us stay deeper longer than other fish, like tuna, who return to the surface to warm up. So you see, I'm just a warm-hearted guy. <laughs> well, I better be off, but I'm sad to say goodbye. Keep in touch, okay? Aloha! Welcome to my pond. 
Humans often come here to admire me. I'm a koi, a kuhaku koi, in fact. That's what they call koi fish that are white with red spots. Let me show you my pond. Koi are a domesticated fish, which means that we live with humans, the way that cats and dogs do. Most of the time, we live in beautiful ponds like this, where humans look after us. It was in Japan that humans really started paying attention to our beautiful colors. Koi fish have all sorts of different color combinations. Each color has a different meaning in Japanese culture. A black koi is a symbol for strength. A gold koi represents money and success. Blue koi means peace, and red koi means power. Someone wishing for money might have an entire pond full of gold koi. You can tell our age by looking very closely at our scales. The scales of a koi fish grow in patterns, which means they are striped, like the rings of a tree. When you count the stripes, you can tell how old a koi fish is. We live a pampered life, but because we live in shallow ponds, there are two things we need to keep an eye out for. Cats and birds. Goodbye for now. I've got to run or I'll be dinner. Welcome to the coral reef. It's a bit like the garden of the sea. And I guess you could say we parrotfish are the gardeners. Yum, yum. Mm. It may look like I'm just having a snack, but I'm actually helping the coral grow. Can you believe that? I'll show you. Parrotfish live in coral reefs all over the world. We love them because of all the tasty algae that grows on the coral. Us parrotfish can't get enough of the stuff, and eating it helps the coral to grow. Yum, yum. Mmm. My special beak helps me bite into the coral. I guess that's why you call us parrotfish. When I swallow, I have extra little teeth in my throat to help chew it up more. One problem, though. Our coral reefs are disappearing. Humans are overfishing, dumping rubbish in the sea and causing global warming, which is all very bad for coral reefs. I hope you humans clean up your act soon, or else we'll have no coral left to eat. <sighs> I'm really tired. But sleeping can be dangerous around here. Lots of fish would love to munch a snoozing parrotfish for dinner. But we can make a special bubble to sleep in. It's smell-proof, so hungry sharks can't sniff us out while we're asleep. Well, nighty-night. Have a nice... Oh. Hmm, humans. Most of you call me a killer whale, but I'm actually an oceanic dolphin. And you may call us orca. Family is so important, isn't it? Here are all my children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and great-great... Yes, well. And there at the point am I, the leader, the matriarch of a large pod, as we call it. And like any big family, we're loud. Each pod has its own special calls, so we recognize each other. But our real skill is using echo sounding to lead us to food. We all make our clicks, and when they bounce off, say, a shoal of delicious salmon, we know exactly where they are. Yum, yum. Quite honestly, we're not too impressed with you humans. Overfishing, pollution. I think you can do better than that. Oh, oh dear. I'm getting a little old for that. I am in my 70s now, after all. Did you know there are two main kinds of orcas? I'm a resident orca. We don't travel much and mostly eat smaller fish. The other kind are called transient orca. They swim far and wide to gobble up bigger animals. Now it's time for me to get back to my pod. You be a good human. Goodbye.
Ha ha! It is I, the finest swordfish in all the sea. Pretty impressive sword, no? I am truly blessed with great speed and agility. No one matches my skills with this sword. I use it mainly to hit and cut at my food. Ha ha! My skill is legendary. I like to dine at night. Smaller fish like rockfish, mackerel, herring. Mmm, it's very good. Our only real enemies are killer whales. They like to eat us. Not even my sword can protect me from the killer whale. I have to be smart to survive. The only real attention I like is from the ladies. <laughs> they love me because I am daring and adventurous and handsome, of course. Even though swordfish lose all their teeth and scales by adulthood. Swordfish have special organs that heat our eyes and brain, which help us to see much better when we are catching our food. Despite my popularity with the ladies, I like to swim alone. I am how you say, the mysterious hero. Now you see me? <laughs> now you don't. Dudes, good to see you. Come and chill with me here in the shallow waters. It's warm, it's light, everything a halibut can need. Oh wait, I totally forgot to tell you my name. I'm the California halibut, or some people call me flounder. But I don't just live in California, I live all the way up and down the west coast of America. Now, you may have noticed something a bit funky about me. Extreme close up. Yep, both of my eyes are on one side of my face. Hey, bro. See, news alert. I didn't always look like I do now. I was totally like my younger brother here when I was a tiddler. I mean, he's only 13 at the moment, 13 days old. As we grow, our eyes move to one side of our face. It could be our left side, but for me, it was the right. But you never know which. This happens so that we can have both of our eyes looking up instead of one eye looking into the sand. Now I can lie down, get chilled, and stay camouflaged. The camo is only on my top side. Or is it my right side? Now I've confused myself. <laughs> my other side is bright white, so I keep it hidden. But what a sweet life, lounging around and keeping both eyes open at the same time. Hey, yum. I better say goodbye, dudes. You're totally giving away my top hiding position, and it's lunchtime. Later, skaters. Ah, stay back, or I shall pinch you. I am a lobster. I have these fearsome claws, hard not to notice. I am always prepared to catch my dinner. And if a claw breaks off, I grow a new one. A long time ago, I got caught in a lobster pot. <laughs> There's lots of different types of lobster, and we're found in all the world's oceans. We live in burrows and only come out at night. I mostly get around by scuttling across the seafloor, but when I swim backwards, I can get up to 11 miles per hour, as fast as a human running. They say we are royalty too, blue bloods. Lobsters molt as we grow. That means we grow new shells and then shed our old ones as we get bigger. Lobsters live about 50 years, but we can live to be 100 years old or more if we don't get injured or eaten. What was that? Did you see something? Lobsters don't have good eyesight, but we do have a good sense of touch and smell. Uh-oh, I can smell trouble. On guard, I will pinch you. Time to fight, or maybe time to flee. 
Oh, hiya! It's so good to see you. I'm a squid. I mean, there are like so many kinds of squid. Itty bitty ones and colossal ones that are like huge. Squid are just the best. S-Q-U-I-D, S-Q-U-I-D, go squid! Yay! Squid live almost everywhere in the oceans. I myself am a humble squid. If you want, you can find me from Peru right up to Alaska. That's our patch. Humboldt squid are also called jumbo squid and flying jumbo and red devils. That is so unfair. I mean, people think we're aggressive, but we're not aggressive. Well, maybe a little, but only if you disturb us when we're feeding. Yum, 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 yum. Mm -hmm. Hi, we're good. Yeah, so we Humboldt have some special moves. Watch this. Is that special? Is it ever? How do we do it? Jet propulsion. Yay! Inside our mantles are gills and this siphon that takes in water one way and pumps it out like a jet at the other. So cool! We're going down. No worries, I have lights in my eyes. Really, I do. Oh, excuse me. Just texting a friend. You use phones? We talk with colors. Well, I gotta go now. You take care. Go Humboldt! Bye! Whoa! Ow! Oh. Hi, I'm a cookie cutter shark. Yes, I know, I'm small for a shark, but I'm still a shark, okay? How do I get my name? Well, what you do when you cut out cookies from cookie dough, I do to other creatures, like this. <laughs> we'll eat anything. Whales. Dolphins. Fish. Other sharks. Sometimes even humans. Some cookie cutter sharks, not me of course, have even tried to eat submarines. And underwater cables. Most of us are smarter than that, though. Our undersides are covered in light-emitting organs. From beneath, the light from these blends in with the moonlight and makes us look like smaller fish, which lures bigger fish to us. And then we chow down. Every day, billions of plankton head for the surface, and every day, bigger fish feed on them. But vertical migration isn't just about feeding. It also helps clean the ocean because it uh, gets all the poo down to the ocean floor quicker than if it just sank down on its own. Oh, yum, my favorite, squid. Excuse me while I uh, take a bite. <coughs> ah, I wasn't hungry anyway. Greetings, Earthling. Welcome to my world. My name is Glaucus Atlanticus, but I answer to many other names too. Blue Angel, Blue Dragon, Blue Sea Slug. That's right, human, I am a sea slug. And you thought I was an alien, didn't you? Silly human. <laughs> You've probably met my cousin, the common garden snail. We may be from the same family, but we sea slugs have evolved for life in the sea. There are over 2,000 types of us alien-looking sea slugs. Some of us became brightly colored like the batwing sea slug. Some became cute and fluffy like the sea bunny. But by far the most beautiful is the tiny blue dragon, don't you think? But despite my good looks, I'm often not seen at all. See, I like to float at the surface of the ocean, where my blue back hides me from hungry birds in the sky, and my grey belly keeps me hidden from hungry fish beneath. And it makes sneaking up on jellyfish so easy. A blue bottle jellyfish is poisonous enough to kill many creatures, but it cannot kill the tiny blue dragon. In fact, Blue dragons love to eat blue bottle jellyfish whole. Yum. Hmm, I will get you next time, jellyfish. See you around, Earthling. <laughs>